recall the great breakthroughs of the 20th century, relativity, the macroscopic structure of space-time in the universe, and quantum mechanics, the incredibly fascinating uh, uh, structure of, of atomic and subatomic particles and how they work, were startling. Some would say, that's it. It's over. We now understand the totality of physical reality. And while we have to figure out how they work together, there's really nothing beyond. What do you see? Oh, I don't think uh, this notion that physics is about to come to an end can be taken terribly seriously. In fact, uh, very few of my colleagues would agree with the fact that the theory of relativity and, and quantum mechanics are somehow the last word. Uh, it uh, clearly is a stepping stone, an important one, on the way to uh, some deeper level. And the issue really is, uh, will this go on forever? That uh, is science an unending enterprise and we'll always find uh, a level of reality tantalizingly uh, <laughs> glimpsed below the one that uh, we're at? Or will it one day come to an end? By temperament, I'd like to believe it does come to an end, but certainly isn't coming to an end where we are now. And the question is, uh, how much of the fundamental concepts that we have in our uh, present day uh, physics are uh, going to stand the test of time. So for example, space and time, are these uh, truly primitive entities or are they built out of something else? Um, particles of matter, we're pretty sure, have uh, uh, building blocks in, inside them, maybe little strings, maybe something else. Uh, and then there are deeper issues like quantum physics, which uh, a lot of people use the word, it's a weird and mysterious branch of physics uh, that most ordinary people don't understand, um, but it is the framework. Uh, it's the one thing that all physicists seem pretty certain about, is that whatever uh, comes beyond our present theories will be cast in a quantum framework. But one can still ask, why quantum mechanics? Why uh, is that the last word, or is there some other way of describing reality? Uh, and so uh, I'm personally interested in exploring all of these uh, possibilities and looking for limitations or asking the question, well, okay, so we see a world described by quantum mechanics and by a various set of particles in space and time uh, with three space dimensions and one of time and so on. Why is that so? Could it be otherwise? Uh, does it have to be that way? And uh, if, there, if it doesn't have to be that way, is there something special about that particular setup? And I think the answer is yes, there is something pretty special about three space and one time dimension, about the uh, set of particles that we have and the forces that bind them together. Uh, and I think there's even something special about quantum physics, about the, the rules of quantum mechanics. So we need to understand where all these things have come from. And the only way to do that is to uh, have some deeper level of reality from which they emerge. That's really tough because if you say, well, okay, we can see the surface of things, but what lies beneath? If we throw all that away and try and start again from scratch, where do we start from? There's a thousand different starting points. Mm. Uh, what, what are the clues? How can, we, how can we dig deeper? How can we get into this? And over my career, there have been just a little handful of pointers to what might be deeper. One of these is the curious connection that Stephen Hawking discovered between gravitation, quantum physics, and thermodynamics. The fact that black holes are not black, but they glow faintly mm -hmm. with heat radiation and they have a sort of thermodynamic aspect, uh, struck me, certainly at the time, as being uh, a very deep result and pointing to something well beyond the particular uh, technical result that he'd uh, derived. And I think over the last 30 years, uh, many people have come to the same conclusion, but we haven't quite know where to, to, to take it. Uh, well, what, what is it pointing us towards? What is this? What uh, are some connection? of the options? I mean, what's on the table? What, what can we evaluate? Even if, even if they're all wrong, at least we know what are some possibilities. Well, there's one thing that intrigues me uh, that comes directly out of this. Uh, the curious thing about the uh, black hole result is that uh, uh, there's a quantity called entropy, which you introduce in the theory of heat. Um, and if you take uh, uh, the entropy of a gas, say, in a flask, uh, if you have a flask that's got twice the volume, it's got twice the entropy. Entropy is a sort of measure of the degree of disorder in the system, uh, but it's a precise quant quantitative thing. Now, it turns out that in the case of the black hole, the entropy is uh, uh, proportional to the surface area yes. of the black hole, not to its volume. Yeah. Uh, and that's really very weird because it says that somehow the physics, the contents, the information content of the black hole has been captured by a two-dimensional surface that envelops in it. In totality. Right, in totality. 
And so now there's uh, a hint that the same thing applies to the universe as a whole. Imagine enveloping the whole universe in a two-dimensional surface. Could it be that somehow everything about the universe is captured just by that two-dimensional surface, the information on that surface? In other words, there's far less in the universe than we really <laughs> thought. It's like a hologram. Yeah. A hologram uh, is a, a, a two-dimensional surface. You shine a laser on it, you get a three-dimensional image. So could the universe be uh, a three-dimensional image of what is really two dimensions, uh, the physics on two dimensions? And that uh, comes directly out of this. Mm. And uh, if that is true, it might mean that we have to change the basic principles uh, on which we build our physics. Uh, could it be that there is a sort of holographic principle for the universe? Uh, and that uh, we should really be concentrating on the, the physics of two-dimensional surfaces and not three-dimensional volumes. And if we combine that holographic uh, principle with some other principles, maybe we'll have a totally different uh, view of physics. So here we're making information primary. I uh, should mention that this entropy concept, which I've been talking about, this is a measure of disorder of the system, is also a measure of the information content right. of the system. Uh, uh, and if you uh, think of a star collapsing to form a black hole, you've lost all the information about the star down the black hole. And so the collapse of an object into a black hole takes the information away with it. So the lost information equals the gained entropy. Uh, so uh, what we have now is an image of the universe where uh, instead of regarding matter as the primary stuff of the universe and information as being a sort of secondary or derived concept, we're thinking that maybe the information is the primary content of the universe and that matter uh, is, uh, is the derived thing. Uh, and now John Wheeler, many years ago, uh, coined this very well with his term, it from bit, yeah, uh, that a bit of information uh, is the thing at the bottom and the it, the object, <laughs> the physical object, is something which is derived from that. So it turns the traditional notion on its head. And, and that would make it more understandable to have that represented on a surface because it would seem to be easy to, to, to represent information on a surface if, if information is the most fundamental thing. Well, I, th I still find it pretty weird that, <laughs> uh, you know, somehow uh, there's all this uh, activity, all these processes going on in the, the three-dimensional volume of space, all those degrees of freedom, as uh, physicists like to say, yes. uh, and yet many of them are somehow redundant or, or correlated or connected with each other because at the end of the day, uh, there's much less degrees of freedom, only those surface degrees of freedom that count. Uh, and so there is a, a sort of hidden link, a hidden connectivity in the universe, which has not been apparent before. So I think that's a very promising line of inquiry. It's still in its infancy. You've looked at some broad global ways of trying to explain the universe, and you've had this wonderful phrase that everything you come up with is kind of ridiculous. And so it doesn't matter which one you're choosing to, to explain, you can't be accused of being ridiculous because they're all ridiculous. Uh, would this type of deeper physics help us in discerning between those ultimate explanations? Very much so, because uh, if we imagine that uh, the universe has a sort of maximal uh, surface around it, and from what we know, this is true, um, true for two reasons. One is that the universe has a finite age, and so light can have traveled a, a maximum distance, and we can take uh, that surface as being the boundary of, of our uh, observable universe. And also we know that the universe is dominated by something called dark energy, which is causing it to expand faster and faster. And that makes a sort of horizon out there in the universe, just like the horizon uh, on the surface of a black hole, but it's mm. sort of inside out. So for two reasons, we think the universe is finite uh, and has therefore a finite surface around it and hence a finite information content. Uh, and that I think is deeply significant because by tradition, when applying the laws of physics, we've assumed that uh, Mother Nature uh, has uh, access to um, infinitely precise computation, that these laws of physics are uh, perfect uh, mathematical forms. It's an idea that goes back at least as far as Isaac Newton. The laws of physics are immutable, exact, perfect, infinitely precise mathematical relationships existing in some sort of otherworldly realm outside of space and time. But if it turns out that uh, the universe has a finite information content, then it gives us a very different image of the nature of the laws of physics because uh, it, it makes the laws uh, more akin to 
computer software. If we think of the universe now as a gigantic information processing system, then the laws play the role of software and the universe plays the role of hardware. But as anyone who owns a computer knows, the computational power of a computer is always finite. And that's true of the universe as a whole. It only has a certain amount of computational power. And that, to me, suggests that the laws of physics have a finite accuracy, mm. a finite fidelity, a finite precision. Uh, and so that completely changes our view of the application of physical law. We can no longer say, well, Mother Nature can compute to arbitrary precision, that there's going to be an inherent sloppiness or wiggle room or fuzziness in the basic laws. And furthermore, that uh, fuzziness or wiggle room is, uh, would have been greater in the past when the universe was smaller mm -hmm. and younger and there was less information in it. And so this suggests a view of physical law, instead of being stamped onto the universe from without, uh, like a maker's mark, infinitely precise laws, boom, there right from the beginning, from the Big Bang. Instead, the laws are inherent in and emergent with the universe. So they start out sort of fuzzy and unfocused and zero in over time. As more information becomes see, available. As more information becomes available, these laws become better and better defined. So the laws are now within the universe and not magically imposed on it from outside. Mm. And that traditional view of the laws being imposed from without is essentially theological, I might say. It comes from the idea that there was an external lawgiver God who made a universe and imposed laws upon it from outside. Physicists have, have bought, by tradition, bought exactly that image. They say, well, the laws of physics are not in the universe, they're outside of it, and they're imprinted on it at the moment of birth, and they're fixed, immutable, universal, absolute laws. They can't change, uh, and they're infinitely precise. Well, it's a very theological notion. And I think that the time has come to abandon that idea that we appeal to something outside of the universe to explain the laws that are within the universe. I'd like to have an explanation from entirely within the system, uh, based on the notion of information as the primary entity out of which everything is put together.